So uh, let's talk about the film The Bear. So I watched a film when I was uh, very young, probably three or four years old, and Jessica saw it on the Criterion channel called The Bear. Uh, it was my kid's film, and I recommended it to her as a good film that I remembered. Uh, I wanted just to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, it's essentially with very little dialogue, and I, I always thought upon rewatch, it's, it's sort of like a Jeffers poem on film, mm. uh, where you get uh, the, the inhumanist, quote unquote, element, uh, but you also get these, these wonderful scenes with the animals. And then even the humans who initially seem uh, a threat, and they are a threat, uh, you see some of their good sides towards the end. Yeah, and I'm just picking up here. You'll see Jessica about a half hour ago had this thing, talk about the bear, this little sheet of paper. And uh, so I just held it up and you can see it when I, I put this online. But um, well, I would, I, I, first off, I, I don't think it's a children's film. I think it's a film that children will like. Uh, it, it has- yes, well, the bear humping and the, uh, the bloodiness of it uh, sort yeah. of goes against the fact that it's a children's film. But in memory, this was my yeah. kid's film. Yeah, and the the movie it actually reminds me the most of, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, uh, in 1974, there's an American film called Grizzly Adams, The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. It starred yeah. Dan Haggerty, and it was about a guy in like the 1860s, right after the Civil War. And I think there really was a Grizzly Adams, but this is a, a mythicized version of it. This guy, Dan Hagley, played this big guy with a beard who saves a bear cub uh, on a ledge. And it was a, a sleeper hit. It wasn't a huge hit, but it was a sleeper hit in 76. And it later became a television show in 78, 79, maybe 80, two or three seasons on NBC. And I watched it, I remember, a few years later in the mid-80s. And it's it's it was a... Overall, quite a good series, uh, and uh, and then there was there was a TV show called Ben the Bear uh, uh, back in the late sixties, early seventies. As a kid, that I remember too. Um, but anyway, um, that Grizzly Adams uh, film had just voiceover of the Adams character. He never speaks in the film; he does voiceover. And this doesn't even have that. It just has it just has a, a little bit of dialogue. Uh, between some of the human characters. It follows a bear, a little bear cub is uh, with its mother and she's trying to knock over a tree to get some fruit to fall down. And she actually uh, uh, unleashes an avalanche on herself and dies. Uh, and it's interesting because I looked up how they filmed some of the stuff. Some of it was using animatronic bears um, and it was filmed actually in the Alps, not in British Columbia where you live. But, uh, and then the little bear cub eventually wanders off after a day or two of trying to revive its is mother. It, but he, uh, in response to his death, he, isn't the uh, reaction from the bear cub just perfect? Where you get uh, it, it doesn't. It, it's not like one of these Disney films where there the animals are crying. It just yeah. sort of lays next to her. Yeah. Uh, you see, it sort of uh, it doesn't know what to do. It reminds me of uh, the philosopher and the wolf, where you get the the dog just sniffing yeah. at the corpse of the other dog. Yeah, and uh, uh, it, a lot of it works. And then uh, we see these hunters. That there's this male bear, uh, uh, grizzly bear, and and they they shoot it, and it, it's all bloody. And it, it he attacks. Uh, well, he he somehow gets away. Um, and uh, the little bear, follow, the cub follows the bear. They develop a kind of relationship. Uh, the the hunters then go back. Uh, and I guess they some they go back to where, whatever fort or wherever they came from, and they a guy comes with the dogs, and the the big bear is chased by the dogs. He kills a couple of the dogs, uh, and basically it, it ends up uh, after some adventures that uh, the big bear could kill one of the hunters, but somehow shows some mercy. And it, it, this film is so much better than the. The Revenant film with Leonardo DiCaprio uh, with the bear scene, um, but uh, uh, and then it ends uh, with the uh, uh, the bear after he's killed the, the one of the hunters wants to kill the big bear, but the the hunter who's just spared by the bear stops him. The, the big bear goes off. The little cub looks like he's about to get killed and eaten, eaten by a, a a panther, but then the big bear is behind him and scares him okay. away. Uh, it, it 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 works. You in a sense. 
you 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 know that you're not going to get the cub killed but at you, you do feel a little bit uh, uh, of, of tension. It, it works. It's not in the league with Oh Hassar Balthazar by Bresson, but it's a, a genre film as a, a small little work. It's a gem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, some of the, it is a, very much a poet's film though, um, because of the lack of dialogue. It doesn't seem uh, all that prosaic. Mm. And I also think that uh, some of the symbolism in the film, like you get these scenes where the bullets are pointing to the moon or a moon is reflected in the lake and the bear goes and swats at it and it's like he's dispersing yeah. the moon. Those are nice little touches. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, I didn't know this at the time uh, when I first watched it as a boy, but it's also a French film. Yeah. And it, it, it's so much better than most of the new wave crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it takes more risk, and you wouldn't even think it was a French film based on uh, what you have. I don't know if they overdubbed the dialogue and it was actually in uh, the French language or not, but it, if it if it was, then it was dubbed very well. Yeah, I don't think it was dubbed. The, the, the lips match up in the American actors that were used. It's set in British Columbia, so it's not going to be French unless they were making French Canadians. Uh, two things. The guy did the quest for fire before that and then the dream scenes. The dream scenes, whether it's animated, actually work. I think because uh, if you had a more human-like uh, memory of a dream, uh, I don't think it would work. What would what would uh, a bear dream about? Well, that it looks more like something from a Rankin Bass, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer kind of animals. Like it, there's the scene where the mother bear, you see that, and then then you see uh, was it birds or bees that are flying around, and and you know when he went to eat some honey. He's now dreaming of bees. That seems a skewed reality, but it's uh, uh, since bears are smart creatures, but they're not as smart as, as monkeys. They're not as smart as whales, but they're smarter, presumably, than in a sense, maybe some of the dogs or, or cats might be. That it, it's somewhere midway between what an, uh, a lesser animal and a human might dream. So it, it works there. The interesting thing is the only other film that I knew about this fellow, the French director, whose name slips my mind now, um, is that he directed Quest for Fire, which to me was one of the more laughably bad uh, uh, K films out there. And it's a it's a bad film, not because it, it, you know it's it's better in a sense than something like One Million BC, where Raquel Welch is a cave woman, you know, walking around in a uh, a leather bikini, <laughs> but. But by the same token, if you've ever seen Quest for Fire, it's it's a silly mishmash of things about how the first humans... Okay. The, the problem with it, too, is is the outfits that they're wearing, whatever that is, yeah. sort of like Jim Henson in yeah. The Cape. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't take it seriously. It's not like with 2001 with the, uh, the yeah. primal scenes where you see the apes and Yes, they're played by actors, but yeah. they at least move and act like apes. This yeah. is uh, very silly. Yeah. It, there's also a film, I think, uh, uh, who's that girl from, you remember the movie 10 with Dudley yeah. Moore? Bo Derek. That, yeah, I think she did one, uh, it was also set in British Columbia, yeah. although it didn't look like British Columbia, and it was uh, also a laughable uh, cave film. Yeah, well, <laughs> Bo Derek is not a noted actress, but uh, anyway. <laughs> well, trying to see her emote as a monkey is even worse. Mm. <laughs>